hopefully this is the last time I'm adjusting this camera. Hold up books, is it okay? All right, hello, hello. First off, well, first off, this is the second time I'm recording this because I was blurry the first time. But other than that, I'm very tired. Just a disclaimer. So I'm gonna try to film this pretty quickly. I'm sorry if I like, first, sorry for my appearance. <laughs> like, my hair is sticking out in all different ways. It's been a day. And also sorry if I show my lack of energy because I literally just got back from Indianapolis, which is like an hour away from me. I just got back like 10, 15 minutes ago. I had an internship event. It was the Indiana Conference for Women. It was really fun. It was really inspirational. I got free books out of it. I got to listen to incredible women speaking. It was great. But I had to wake up at 3.30 a.m. to get there by 6 and I was even late. I got there like 6.20. Yeah, it's been a day, but instead of going straight to bed after I got home like I planned originally, I figured it's sunny outside. There's a lot of good natural lighting right now and it's already November 7th. So I really just wanted to film my October wrap-up video since I don't have to get ready. I can just like get it over with and then edit it within the next couple days, especially because Saturday I have a day off. All that aside, October was a really good reading month. My goal was to read seven books and I did that. I had to cram the last three literally in the last three days of October and I successfully did so. Also, I only have two physical copies of the books with me as of this moment because the other ones were either ebook or from the library, which I already returned. The first one, if you didn't know, if you haven't seen my other reading videos recently, my boyfriend got me the three set of the Harry Potter Illustrated Editions. I started the first one on September 1st and then I read the second one on October 1st. So Chamber of Secrets is book number one of October and I just started the third one for November 1st and then I got the fourth one a couple days after it came out. So I'm gonna start that next month. But yeah, obviously five out of five stars, like Harry Potter Illustrated Editions are such a different experience from the regular editions. Like this is my first reread of Harry Potter. I just appreciate everything so much more because I'm a very visual person and I love art and Jim Kay's illustrations too are just amazing. So I don't know, I'm like way into the stories more I know I'm like late to the game, but it's just better and I love it. Obviously, after the fourth one, I'm not gonna wait until the rest of them come out illustrated. I'll do another reread or something, but I'll finish the whole series eventually in regular fo edition form. But wow, I'm rambling. See what I mean? I'm tired. I'm sorry. Book number two, help insert pictures somewhere. Um, if you didn't know, also from my recent videos, I did the Gilmore Girls Readathon last month and it was from October 1st to the 15th. I'm like collecting so much saliva, that was gross. I'm sorry, I'm only human. But anyway, it wasn't that successful of a readathon for me. I only read, I think, three books, but I did fulfill six of seven challenges, so that part was good. But it was the first Gilmore Girls readathon ever, and I loved it. I love that it was Gilmore Girls themed. Love that show. Book number two was for that readathon, and it was called The City Baker's Guide to Country Living, and I absolutely loved it. Five stars. At first, I was like, Nothing's really happening. Like, what's going on? But then I was like, It's a, it's a book about a small town. Like, you knew it was Gilmore Girls vibes. Like, you knew it was just about, like, a big in a small town. Once I like wrapped my head around the fact that it's like that type of contemporary, I was like, all right, this is really good. I felt all the feels. Every character was like a great addition to the story. Louise Miller is a very good writer. I did not really enjoy her second book though. I did read it last month. I'm jumping around. Never mind. The City Baker's Guide to Country Living was really good. 10 out of 10 would recommend, five stars for sure. Also, I always link my Goodreads down below for reading videos, booktube videos. So that'll be down there if you wanna follow me and see what I've been reading aside from what I put on YouTube. In the City Baker's Guide to Country Living, like I said, it's all like Gilmore Girls vibes. Like the main character is literally Suki. Like she has like 17 different types of apple pie she knows how to make. She moved from a big city to a small town in Vermont and she works at this inn. Sound familiar, Gilmore Girls fans, anyone? They enter like all these baking contests and then you know, she falls in love, things get complicated with her friends and like all her relationships in the book and interactions with like everyone she meets basically is just like a new thing. And I loved it and you'll feel all the feels and I love books that make me feel something. So that was number two. Number three was Save the Date by Morgan Matson. 
At first, I was like, is this four stars or five stars? I don't know. But I did give it five stars. It's about, I think the main character's name is Charlie. I'm just watching like so many shows and reading so many books with girls named Charlie in it that I'm just so confused. I think, I think the main girl's name is Charlie. Her sister is having a wedding and they have this big old family and her mom writes a comic strip that's like really famous. Literally, Good Morning America was in their living room filming their family being their family and everything goes wrong for the sister's wedding it got redundant for some parts that's why i was considering giving it a lower rating but by the end i really enjoyed the character development of the main character especially what she realizes about life about growing up and herself as she's going into college and she was like holding back and stuff and yeah her development was what made the book for me usually with books that have a lot of characters I really hope this is recording. Let me check. Okay, yes, it was definitely recording. As I was saying, books with a bunch of different characters, especially like siblings, like she had five siblings, five other siblings, or there were five of them total, I don't remember. But typically with books like that, like it's hard for me to keep track of who's who, unless there's like a guide in the, in the beginning of the book about like character descriptions and stuff. But otherwise, like it's really hard for me sometimes to distinguish who's who. But with this book, like, I felt like their personalities were distinct enough that I was able to follow how they were all connected and which were just minor characters like the neighbors even and like the paper girl and then like random people they meet while preparing for this wedding like it was easy to understand and it was a really fast paced book like even though it's a pretty thick book it's like over 400 pages i think i was able to get through it really quickly and yeah five stars next book i talked about it briefly called the late bloomers club and it's louise miller's second book and i'm really glad i read her debut first because this one did not match up to the city baker's guide to country living and i feel like if i read this one first i would not have read the other one so I'm glad I started with The City Baker's Guide to Country Living. Late Bloomer's Club is, is like a companion novel to it, kind of. It's different main characters, like a different perspective and everything, but like it's the same town. Characters from the first book show up in this book, but just like they talked a lot about money and selling properties and the, the little sister was really annoying and I don't know. At times I was like, okay, it's a small town book, I still like it. But just like everything else was just like not doing it for me. But I got through it really quickly, like it didn't drag on, even though I wasn't really enjoying my experience reading it. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Next book is P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. It's the second book to the To All the Boys I Loved Before series. I picked up this book as an ebook, but I was originally going to use it for the challenge for Gilmore Girls Readathon to read a book with Asian representation or written by an Asian author. I didn't get to finish it because I started it right after The City Baker's Guide to Country Living, and that is an adult fiction book. And then P.S. I Still Love You was such a drastic shift from like adult to YA, like the way Lara Jean thinks and just like acts towards boys like it was just so different for me like i was so soaked into the adult fiction world that i couldn't enjoy p.s i still love you but eventually i finished it after i dnf'd it for the readathon did not finish as dnf you didn't know yeah so i picked it up again i finished it you know like when i didn't bring a physical book with me like to work or whatever i would just read it during my breaks on my phone and it was pretty good i enjoyed it towards the end like i said it's very very ya just like high school feelings and high school thoughts and just how they execute their actions I guess I don't know it was just very I want to say premature but that I don't know if that's the word juvenile is the word I'm looking for it was very juvenile but I still enjoyed it I gave it I think four stars possibly I don't remember next book is book number six and it's called the art of breaking things i started this book in july and i dnf'd it because i just felt like reading other books even though it was a captivating story it's about this girl who got sexually abused by her mom's new boyfriend who was an ex and then became her boyfriend again his name's dan so trigger warning for that but the book is about her getting through it and coping with it through art that really intrigued me when i saw the synopsis of this on barnes and noble and i just immediately bought it. I actually started reading this right after the reading rush and then I stopped because I don't know at some points it was too triggering for me in a couple ways but like I also just wanted to read other books that weren't contemporary at the time. I think I gave this four or five stars I don't remember but I did like it a lot once I like bunkered down and like read it in bulk I guess 
it did go by pretty fast but it took me a while to get into yeah the girl's name is sky she is pretty young for like well i guess i don't know for the amount she like parties and stuff and smokes weed i don't know i guess i've i get my ages mixed like whoa i'm tired i need to stop talking about this book i do recommend it but it is very triggering at times because like they have dual timelines for a couple chapters so it goes back to like when she was a kid and she got sexually abused basically men mistreated her like all her life and she was you know frowned upon because of it like she was called a hoe in high school because she would randomly hook up with boys who would like take advantage of her when she was drunk and stuff like that so it's a tough read but it's important. I like the fact that it was coped with through art. That's the unique part about it. Yes. <sighs> the last book, book number seven, was A Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Season of the Witch. I did not even know that they had books to accompany the new Netflix original series, but I love the series, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna read this. And I liked it. The language was very poetic and lyrical, especially in terms of Ambrose, which is how he was in the show. And that's another thing that I liked about the book is that the uh, the author, I forgot who the author was. She, I think it was a she, portrayed the characters really well. If you've seen the show, it'll be okay to read the book, I feel like, but I mean, obviously it's okay to read the book anyways. But I feel like if you haven't watched the show and you read the book, it would be much more mediocre than the other way around um but i finished the whole show and i was like what am i supposed to do with my life now so i was like okay i found this book thank god so there's like the regular chapters of like what's going on it's a prequel novel so nothing much is happening it's just like introducing you to all the characters and the situations and blah 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 and then there's like these little chapters that are called what happens after dark or in the dark i think it was in the dark and it's perspectives in first person of like various characters that aren't because like the regular story is Sabrina's perspective and it's first person the what happens after dark sorry my bad it's third person and what happens in the dark or after dark I like those sections better because I think because it was in third person and like you get in this person's head that way and it was just a lot more I like the vocabulary used in those sections better and just like the descriptive language and the poetic like lyrical type of I already said those words I need to stop and I keep talking with my hands and that's what I do when I have nothing to hold like a physical book because I'm dumb and didn't record this video when I had the book still checked out in the library okay that was rough i'm sorry i told you guys it was gonna be quite the video because of how tired i am i'm gonna go take a nap now hope you have a good day that was my october wrap-up video thanks for watching